Welcome everyone. In this video, we'll walk through replacing the seals and O-rings for the IntelliFlow 3 variable speed and flow pump provided in the Quick Kit from Pentair. The steps in this video will apply to the 3 horsepower and 1.5 and horsepower pump. The quick kit comes with the mechanical shaft seal, diffuser o-ring, pump lid o-ring, seal plate o-ring, two drain plug o-rings, and a small tube of silicone lubricant. So let's get started by taking off the pump lid and then removing the O-ring from the groove in the top of the housing. And now we'll go ahead and remove the strainer basket. Then we can go ahead and remove the two drain plugs from the side of the pump housing and go ahead and take off the O-rings from the drain plugs. And now we need to separate the strainer pot from the seal plate by removing the eight strainer pot bolts. These bolts can be removed with a 9 16 wrench or a 1 quarter inch Allen key. And if we have the one and a half horsepower pump, we'll only have six strainer pot to seal plate bolts. And now with the strainer pot removed, we can go ahead and remove the diffuser o-ring as well as the seal plate o-ring. And then we can remove the diffuser by removing the three Phillips head retaining screws. And here we're using a number two Phillips head screwdriver. And now to remove the impeller, we need to hold the motor shaft in place with a one quarter inch Allen key through the back of the motor cover. And then we can remove the impeller by turning it counterclockwise. With the impeller off, we can remove the spring loaded portion of the mechanical shaft seal. To access the motor to seal plate bolts, we first need to remove the wiring cover which is held on by two Phillips head retaining screws. Then we can take off the drive cover by removing the four drive cover to motor screws. And now we'll remove the left and right motor shrouds by removing the four Phillips head retaining screws that hold them in place. And then we can take off the drive by removing the four drive to motor screws. And now we can remove the motor to seal plate bolts using a 9 16 wrench. With the seal plate removed, we can use a 9 16 socket to drive the seal from its seat in the seal plate. And now we'll begin putting the pump back together by first installing the new seal. Let's first make sure the seat is clean and then we'll spray the seat with a solution of soap and water or alcohol and water to help the seating process. When handling the seal, avoid touching the sealing surface to prevent contaminating the seal, which could lead to premature failure. And now we'll use a clean half inch PVC coupling to press the seal into the seat. We can usually press the seat in by hand, but if we need to, we can use a rubber hammer to help seat the seal. While installing the seal, if we did touch the ceramic portion of the seal or contaminate it, we can clean it with a lint-free cloth or a clean tissue. Now we can reinstall the seal onto the motor flange and secure it with the four bolts we removed earlier. We'll tighten these bolts down evenly in a crisscross pattern and then torque them to 105 to 115 inch pounds. And now using the four screws we removed earlier, we can reinstall the drive onto the motor. 
Next, we will reinstall the motor shrouds and secure them with the four retaining screws. And next, we'll reinstall the drive cover and the electrical cover and secure them with the screws that we removed earlier. Now, taking care not to touch or contaminate the sealing surface, we can install the new spring-loaded portion of the mechanical seal, making sure that the sealing surface goes inward against the seal we installed in the seal plate. We can then reinstall the impeller by holding the motor shaft through the back of the motor cover with a quarter inch Allen key and tighten the impeller by hand, turning it clockwise. With the top of the diffuser in the correct location, we can reinstall the diffuser and secure it with the three diffuser screws. Make sure the seal plate and diffuser are both clean Then evenly apply the silicone lubricant onto the seal plate o-ring and install it onto the seal plate. And then evenly apply the silicone lubricant onto the diffuser o-ring and install it onto the end of the diffuser. Now we can install the strainer pot back onto the seal plate and secure it with the eight strainer pot to seal plate bolts. Evenly tighten these bolts in a crisscross pattern to a torque specification of 105 to 115 inch pounds. We'll install the new O-rings onto the drain plugs and then reinstall the drain plugs into the strainer pot. Install the strainer basket, making sure that the hole in the front of the strainer basket aligns with the intake port on the front of the pump. Make sure the groove in the top of the wet end is clean and apply an even amount of silicone lubricant to the new pump lid o-ring and install it into the groove. Make sure the lid is clean and align the notches on the lid with the notches on the strainer pot and tighten the lid. The pump is now ready to go back into service.